Hello, everybody. It's been a busy time in the transfer portal, but there's no need to fear. Your favorite broskies in basketball are here, and we'll break it all down for you right here, right now, recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information. And we are powered by the world, near I say, universe's greatest website, and that would be drrodo.com. I am your sometimes humble host. My name is Jay Heinrich, and I happen to be the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. Find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Follow me, and I will smash that follow back button. You know, I will. It's what I do. It's a two-man box tonight for you. Let's get right to one of the absolute best in the business to do it. The breadheads know him as El Capitan himself. He is the captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. He does the ship. I do the train. That's how this works. Follow him on X at MC Holland 34, the OG Money Mike, Mr. Mike Holland. Mike, what it do, baby? Yo, what it do, my friend? Uh, a couple of weeks away from this, uh, at least undergraduate portion of the transfer portal closing. And it feels like the last 48 to 72 hours have been the craziest. But who knows? Second, <laughs> maybe I just don't want to think about the week before that. So, uh, yeah, a lot going on, man. I'm excited. Uh, you know, we've we've been covering, trying to cover anything and everything that's out there. So glad to be back here talking with you um, after uh, a little bit of a hiatus, a couple of days there for some rest. But uh, that text chain never stops, my friend. No, it does not. And one and done will never stop either. We're going to be coming to you a couple times a week throughout the off season, bringing you all this content. Even when the transfer portal closes, we'll be all over it because we all know that the transfer portal, does it ever really close? Like, re ever? Does it? No, it <laughs> does not. So we'll be here all offseason talking about it, leading all the way up to tip off. So make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons for your broskies in basketball. Do your part in the green screens media universe. And while you're at it, get on over to Twitter and hit up at fantasy. Now of our guy, Eric, the blue pushing buttons tonight, never too far away. And then also our guy at the real Napier, who you see on the socials and hosting a little bit of these portal shows as well. Make sure you follow us all and follow at one and done CDB on Twitter as well. Over a thousand followers over there. And we appreciate every single one of you. TikTok. Uh, we are at, we are, what are we now over there at one and done underscore CDB on TikTok right now. So get over there. And uh, follow us there. We're got some, working through some, you know, we're going to get through some new branding stuff. We're working on, we're heading to the moon, fellas. And ladies, <laughs> of course. We're on our way yeah. to the moon. And we got some changes coming. Some changes coming soon. And we're going to be happy to share those with you. Maybe a little teaser. Oh, there we go, right there. We got it uh, updated there on the screen, on the scroll there. But coming soon, Mike, we're going to tease this clipboard that we're going to have. <laughs> little clipboard. Yeah. We got a lot um, going on, man. I thought the season ended, but it, it's gotten no, no, busier. No, yeah, it, it did, but but we just keep picking up steam. We're going to soon have a handy dandy clipboard for you to be able to find any player that we've discussed on one and done throughout the off season and click a link, boom, right there, and it takes you right to one of the breadheads talking about that specific player we're happy to be able to bring this stuff to you and we're going to roll it out here very soon oh yes we shall roll it out very soon let's hit that comment section look at that live chat that's already on fire snakes eyes <laughs> so well, I see you doesn't snakes want to hear you talk jay <laughs> oh yes he does not care about what i have to say he's been here <laughs> hanging out with us that's okay Br grady oh grady yeah hackers grady the Edger fan, sheesh. Yeah, we understand. We understand where you're coming <laughs> from. But thanks for hanging out with us, Grady. And of course, there he is. He's pronounced blue. <laughs> I didn't really lean into it like I normally do when he's on screen, but he's right. He dropped those fire monies in the chat. Make sure you do the same after you hit like and subscribe and hit those notification bells as well as we hit the headlines tonight. Coming to you live. 
And if you're watching live, hit that live chat as well. Let us know if you are. But we're going to hit those headlines now. First one, down the line, BYU hires Suns assistant coach Kevin Young to replace friend of the show, Mark Pope. Mike, what do you make of this hire by BYU getting a pro coach out to Provo? Yeah, I like what you did there, my friend. You're coming, you're coming with it strong tonight, man. Uh, but as far as Kevin Young's concerned, I like it. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, we were wondering if Kentucky would maybe wait for potentially Billy Donovan in his season. Uh, obviously, they went the route of getting Mark Pope. And it looks like BYU is kind of going the opposite way, getting Kevin Young, who's the Suns assistant that you alluded to. Obviously, Suns expected to do some damage in the playoffs. Um, obviously, preseason hype to maybe go all the way uh, with their big three. But uh, he's a guy with a lot of NBA experience, man. Um, known for his development. And obviously, that is a, a huge thing in college athletics. We talk about it all the time when we you know, talk about it on the football side. Uh, but I kind of like what he said, man. Um, you know, just listening to to you know his thoughts about taking the job during the pressure. It's that like clarity is king. Uh, he's that's what he learned in the NBA, and I think right now more than ever in college basketball, um, clarity for these kids, man. Because we were eighteen to twenty two. Well, shit, twenty three, twenty four uh, with COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, just being up front with these kids probably going to cause you less distractions down the road. Um, so I think you know, obviously the NBA is. Still got some young guys, uh, you know, G League and all that stuff that you, you're dealing with, you know, two-way contracts and all that stuff. Um, so I just think that that's going to be really good for him um, as a, uh, you know, first-time head coach here. I think it's a, I think it's a good hire, man. Any thoughts on, uh, on Mr. Young here going to old BYU? Yeah, I mean, he's a Utah native born in Salt Lake City. He was the highest-paid assistant in the NBA. This isn't just some guy that, oh, hey, he's a pro coach. Shit, no, he was getting paid. In the NBA, uh, he's going to stick around with the Suns throughout the playoffs. And then, um, you know, basically that's it, right? <laughs> like, you stick around and then and then he's done. So I think the what we're going to have to pay the most attention to here as the portal starts to fill and empty and fill and empty uh, as we go through the offseason is how big a role his staff is going to play in terms of recruiting. Yeah. Because right now we're in such a crucial time yeah. Of the portal that like it, it's you're in a tough he's spot over here, he's over here dissecting plays for <laughs> right yeah exactly yeah so i mean like it, it's a very tough time so um we'll see what what they can do it's going to be if they can pull off something impressive here with with this situation and who knows i don't know how long phoenix would be in the playoffs anyway but you know who knows <laughs> but uh but yeah uh big Big time get for BYU. It's uh, yep. you can't say that they didn't swing for the fences here, and, and I like I like the hire a lot. Live chat still on fire. Mitt dropping in, saying <laughs> he's taking a math test, but stopped by to say that his Badgers have a twelve win ceiling. With <laughs> I'm sorry, Mitt and Grady are commiserating yeah, in Don't the man. live chat as we speak. I'm assuming Kobe, this next one's about Mike Woodson, but I don't know. <laughs> Woody. Is that what we're talking about, Cody? We're talking about Woodson. We're going to get to Indiana here yeah. in a little while. Um, we're on BYU topic right now. We're, we talked about uh, them bringing in Kevin Young. We obviously know that Mark Pope left. And at Kentucky here, um, they are going to – and this is – I mean, Mike, I don't think this is really a shock. But Reed <laughs> Shepard Reed Shepherd has decided to go – to the draft initial thoughts like this was really we talked about this earlier in the week right like, but 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 he but his friend jeff shepherd <laughs> uh yeah this is a i don't know man so it's funny like on our text chain yeah, yeah. i asked uh, i asked uh, you, uh, you know i don't know if it was you in particular just in general like hey like if if i was the head coach of a college basketball team and you know, your son was a top 10 pick, but I was in need of like jumpstarting <laughs> my program or, you know, had my dream job and need to make it happen. Would you allow him to play for me? And I think you were the first person to respond or either that or you're the only person to respond very quickly uh, saying that, uh, no, screw you. <laughs> we're going to go yeah. get this money. Uh, you're, do just, you're doing just fine. So, uh, yeah. yeah, man, just a 
it just Kentucky fans, right? Just being kind of crazy, thinking that this yeah. was going to happen. This is too much. This is hey, what, what if he gets Mike, injured? that was that was one hell of a pep rally there of an intro conference. Okay, so you're <laughs> riding that high, man. You're they're riding that high, big blue nation. Reed's coming back, man. Reed's coming back. It's all gonna line up. It's gonna fall <laughs> into place. I've yeah. been there, done that. I get it. You, you get hyped up. Um. Yeah, it's uh, not really a surprise here. SEC Freshman of the Year was Reed Shepard. Second team all-conference after averaging 12.5 points, 4.5 dimes, four boards, and, oh, 2.5 steals as well. Guys with those numbers do not stick around. I don't care where you play. They're going. You're going pro. Um, Mike, as we know, and, and for those of you that are joining us for the first time, first of all, welcome. Uh, the Heinrich line – for three-point shooters, for me, that you have to shoot for it to be effective is 35%. Reed Shepard, he cleared it by a little bit. 52.1% from deep. It's pretty good. Here's the catch, though. No first-round pick from college has shot over 50% from three on, you know, like actual shooters, you know, like that are out there shooting all the time since Glenn Rice. Oh, the big dog, big dog. Glenn Rice at Michigan back in the late 80s. And, of course, that's thanks to our pals over at the big four-letter network. But um, <laughs> Reed Shepard is going to break that streak of not being a first-round pick that shoots the three. That Do you think there. he's going to be a good pro, man? I mean, I feel like you shoot that well, like with the wide-open offenses. Like, I feel like I feel like he's going to be a pretty good pro. I just – I don't know if he's going to have, like, Hall of Fame or, like, ten-time all – you know, even eight-time all-star ceiling. Yeah, maybe it's because I've seen mocks where the Spurs are taking him, and I just oh, <laughs> just here we go. go. Here we go. Good. Anyway, that's for another show, man. It's not this well, show. Well, yeah, yeah, but but the thing is, I you heard me like groan a little bit when when you started talking about him like being having a good pro career. What you know, my initial, but that's like my gut reaction because you know. 10 or 15 years ago, like obviously these guys really aren't being considered as often as these early picks, but like. You, you can count them on one hand, right, that that shoot the ball that were mainly three-point shooters or whatever. But, like, um, the game has changed, to your point. Like, I, yeah, it's just it's so just, different. It's, it sets up for this type, kind of a player to just get out and play. I think he will. So, um, all right, BYU on the mind, Kentucky on the mind here, obviously. Mark Pope on our mind. So, we have a poll for everybody hanging out watching Live with us here, the poll coming to you on the YouTube channel. So if you're watching on Twitter, get over to YouTube at wait is it at get I know at Green Screens Media on YouTube. Just type in Green Screens Media and get over there. The poll is live. You're looking live. Will Mark Pope make a Final Four in his first five years? One, two, three, four, fifth. Anything you say, I say fifth. First five years. Final Four. Mike, I'm putting you on the spot right now. Will Mark Pope make a Final Four in his first five years in Kentucky? Oh, boy. I have to see a roster this year. <laughs> no. Yes or no, Mike? Uh, oh, man. I'm going to say no. <laughs> well, you're entitled to no. your opinion, and you're also entitled to be wrong because, yes, he will make – I think he absolutely <laughs> will make a run at it. I, I'm not – Mo, Mo, Mo jumping in there saying he won't be there in five years. I disagree with you, sir. I think he'll win <laughs> early and often at Kentucky. And, of course, Mo is in here letting everybody know Wisconsin's dead, too, and saying Chucky had burned to Arkansas. We'll get to Chucky later on. Um, thanks for hopping in there. Good to see old Mo Lester Jr., our guy. I don't know if he's our guy. I don't know if he's not my guy. Mike, is he your guy? He might be our guy. Oh, collectively, you know, Mo's, <laughs> a, Mo's a character that hangs out in the comments. We appreciate him nonetheless and all the same. Do the poll. Hit the like and subscribe buttons. Turn on your notification bells. Don't miss anything that we're doing as we stick around in the headlines. Top high school recruit and former Texas Longhorn commit Cam Scott decides to stay home and commits to the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Mike, what do you think of this move? Well, I mean, I wasn't a fan of it when you first saw it, but then Terry went out and destroyed the portal, uh, getting the two Indiana State kids. You know, Shedrick's back. You get Tremont Mark. 
Jordan Pope's probably on the way. So I feel okay as a Longhorn fan. Um, for South Carolina, though, man, like, kind of needed it. <laughs> like, you kind of needed some news here, Jay. Uh, I think the Longhorn's going to be okay. Um, you know, it always sucks when you – this is kind of like the freshman thing, right, or like the high school senior thing. Like, these guys, they sign – like, these guys sign with Duke. They're top 20 guys, and then two or three of them transfer the next year because they didn't play as many minutes as they thought they were going to be. Like, this happens every single year. So this one – Probably a guy that, I mean, if we had gotten this news, probably know they gotten a ton of minutes up front. It goes to South Carolina. Maybe there's some minutes, uh, probably be pretty hefty minutes. What are, your, what are your thoughts on South Carolina and his move to kind of stay in the area? Yeah, awesome shooter, staying home, obviously. And they, like you said, they really needed that news uh, over there. The Gamecocks did. Um, okay, so no Michi Johnson anymore, right? And really, if you think about it, it's it's most of their core. Yeah, and Max has gone. gone. Place. Right. Cooper's yeah. gone. Yeah, who's who's still around? Murray Boyles? <laughs> uh the three K guys that we play in DFS. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Outside of be, yeah, Murray he's a dog, man. He's a dog. They won't be three so. K. They will not be three K <laughs> just because they're gonna have they're gonna be all yeah, maybe. If they're lucky. But yeah, um good stuff there. Good luck to Cam Scott out there in South Carolina. Of course, man, the live chat is still on fire. Edie coming back. Okay, Mo. All right, we did it, dude. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got Rumor Ryan. Is yeah. I got Ryan. Yeah, rumor is Mizzou is still trying to win a conference game as we speak. We, we'll talk I'm not about holding them my in just a minute. I'm not holding my breath, but yeah, we will talk about them here <laughs> in a second. Yes, this is awesome. Peter Jock's jockstrap, coach for Emma McCaffrey hitting the coaching portal. Well, do you blame him? Ooh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Well, but... whoa, 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 maybe not. I don't know about all that. I don't know. I'm not. I need to hear to confirm or deny that one. But <laughs> either way, make sure you hop in those live chat, hit that like and subscribe button, do your part here. Those are the headlines. Get in that poll too while you're at it. Will Mark Pope make a Final Four in his first, first five years at Kentucky? Yes or no? Simple. Hit the poll. Hit the poll let's head to some portal commits now we're going to give you 15 actually 15 portal commits a busy last three or four days like i said in the open the first five we're going to bring to you a couple of guys actually all five of the guys will be inside the top 30 of mike's new transfer portal big board over at the universe's greatest website dr roto Com. It's going to be updated tomorrow, so make sure you head over there to the site and get on the big board. And a big commitment here. Talk about letting Woody cook earlier. <laughs> Let him cook. Mike. Let him cook. Big one here to start off our segment here with the number two player that has entered the transfer portal. Listen, on that big board, there he is, right there. Yeah, big on my man. Bottom. Woo! Uh, man, like, what can you say? Uh, Woodson is cooking with that NIL. <laughs> you get a seven-footer, 260. I think uh, Indiana's done pretty well the last couple of years at TJD. And now balling for the Warriors. One of the better – one of the top ten rookies in the NBA this this year. You got Kella Ware, who – Played really well, um, and now Balo looking to do the same. A much different player than both of those guys. Uh, he's big, strong, powerful. You know, run. You know, throw lobs to him. <laughs> Not much of a game uh, outside of the paint, but uh, for me, like this is a this is a guy who was thirteen points, ten boards. But you look at who he played with. Like he was surrounded by a bunch of shooters. And I know Mo uh, jumped in the comments here. <laughs> Uh, you know, saying that IU better get some shooters. And that's kind of where I'm at. Now we talked about Miles Rice. Like he was in the in the low 30s before he went like over 22 to end the season from three and shot. Ended up shooting like 28 <laughs> or 29% from three. Yeah. Uh, Renew's not a shooter. Uh, and Baco, like, you know, okay. So I wonder if there's just enough spacing for Bala. Like Kelo Ware would shoot threes. Uh, more of a finesse type player. I'm not trying to dog like this. I would rather I would rather get Omar Ballo and figure it out than not get Omar Ballo, I guess is the is the polite yeah. way to say it. Or like I mean there's still upside here. 
But this guy is probably going to excel a little bit more around guys that can shoot to open up the paint for him. Uh, I think Rice can obviously get him on some lobs. If Rice shoots better, um, then I think you know, not, not really an issue there. Some of those guys improve. Maybe they get another shooter. They didn't miss out on Connor Hickman. Um, so we'll see if they're able to get you know somebody on the wing that's able to knock down some threes and open up some space. It's kind of weird how looking at the fit with the new and Balo together. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Like I, I love it because obviously we've seen him play. We know he's a dog on, on both ends of the floor, especially near the rim. But uh, yeah, I think this one in general, uh, obviously a, a great get. But from a fit standpoint, I do have some question marks. So uh, moving on to the number five guy here on our big board is AJ Store. Committed to Kansas today. Now, we heard some kind of wild rumors about Kansas and NIL with him. But he finally ends up in Lawrence. I mean, a volume scorer. Uh, he's an awkward fit at times. Like, we know that he just likes to chuck the ball. So, uh, Kansas really struggled, though, to get any type of shot creation outside of McCullough uh, once he got hurt. And even when McCullough was there, he was having to do so much heavy lifting because Harris is not a uh, – I mean, he's not a shooter from anywhere outside 10 feet. Uh, could every now and then knock down a three-pointer, but they just didn't have enough guys trading. We have uh, Furphy who's testing the draft water. So unless Furphy comes back, like it could get uh, where we're going to have to see Store create a lot and take a lot of isolation shots. So we'll see how they build out the rest of this roster. Obviously, I love Zeke Mayo. A lot of rumors about Riley Kugel. Um, probably not. I, I would say I, I'm not sure why he would go there. Uh, it sounds like they're in the lead for Ryland Griffin too. So there's a lot of wings coming in. I think Bill Self was kind of like, hey, guess what? We didn't really have any wings that we could trust <laughs> uh, that could, you know, create shots. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I obviously think Sore's a big gift for Kansas. Was, these are the guys that Bill Self was daydreaming about a month before the season started when he said he <laughs> yeah, he said that that's how long he'd been checking out. Like, those are, the, those are the guys that he was thinking about. And just bring them all in. It's like you said with Valo, like, is it a fit? Is it the best fit? Maybe not. Do you do you bring in somebody that talented and just figure it out later? Yeah, you do it, and and that's that's the case there. And and it looks like that's what Bill Self is doing at Kansas, because he yeah, that was not a, that did not look like a Bill Self coached Kansas team. Uh, you know, that did not that did not look like a Bill Self coached. Yeah, team. There's a lot of talent coming there. to Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No doubt about it. I'm going to go ahead and hop in here and take Big Z. <laughs> Zvonimir Ivasic. You know how tall he is, Mike. He's seven feet <laughs> two, and you can't teach that. Leaving Kentucky. Guess where he's going, Mike. Guess where he's going. I bet you can guess. I bet you can guess. I think guess. he teased it. It wasn't that hard to going guess. Going to <laughs> Wupig Sui. Following it. Following his coach to Arkansas, Coach Cal gets the first, literally the first guy. Is he just going to play with one guy? He might. <laughs> he might. I mean, here's the deal, though. We know what we get from Ivasic. He's a centerpiece type of guy on both ends of the floor. Like, okay, limited action maybe, uh, but lots of skill there, versatility, shot blocking. He's going to get the run here. But now, Mike, who's going to surround him? Who's the supporting cast? What's that going to look like? Of course, that will matter in the long run, but Big Z is just so, so talented. And he's probably like, would you be surprised if we're talking about him as being one of the best bigs in the country by the end of next no. season? Like not no at, way, not at yeah. all, right? Like, no, this is, so this much is, skill. He's going to be in that conversation for sure. Big Z, shout out seven feet, two of all of that. Yeah, just, you know, the only thing like, and I get it, if you're looking at why, how are you so high on this guy? Because he only played, he didn't even play, average 12 minutes a game last year. Oh, God. It's just one of those things where he's just like the, the ooze, the secret of the hidden ooze, or what was that called? The, two, the, <laughs> the, the secret the, of the ooze. Yeah. The secret of the ooze. It's a good yeah, movie, like, man. Yeah. Ivasic has that ooze. Ivasic is know, like the vanilla ice like on the dance floor with the Ninja Turtles, man. Yeah. <laughs> He was just moving from coal miner's daughter to downtown deliverance. Well, I mean, if you if you hear banjos, uh, big Z, uh, <laughs> go the other way, but you won't. You'll be fine, and and they're gonna win some games. You just feel like it, right? It's because it's Cal. Who cares if they don't have anybody on the roster? <laughs> like you just, they're gonna win. He's gonna find talent. <laughs> we know he is. Yeah, That's what he does. It's he just whether he can win with it. Of course, in he March. Will. In March. Yeah, in March. Exactly. Exactly. Mike, a couple more here on this first slide. Who do you got? 
Yeah, number 13, Malik Mack, the guard from Harvard, uh, finally ends this. I've just been waiting for him to announce that he's committed to Georgetown. Average 17 points, four boards, five assists. He was the Ivy League Rookie of the Year. One of the best freshmen in the country last season. Like, dude can ball. He can get to the rim. He can really score at all three levels. Uh, I wouldn't say he's, like, a, a great playmaker. I'd call him a solid one. Um, it's going to be interesting, though, because we have this kind of a weird fit here. You've got – Jaden Epps, who had to basically do everything for Georgetown last year. You now he's 6'1, 6'2, uh, ton of usage last year. You can get Malik Mack, 6'1, 170. Like, that's great offensively. Like, you're going to have, man, more offensive creation than Georgetown's had in quite some time. But then you got to play defense. So I'm going to be <laughs> looking to see what Georgetown's going to do uh, in their front court to kind of allow these two guys. Uh, to, to run around and, and create havoc offensively. Now, they did get Micah Peavy, 6'8", like a wing, uh, just great on both the, both sides of the ball. So, like this roster for Cooley, it's looking 10 times better than it did, uh, you know, <laughs> three, four months ago. So, well, to be um, fair, it was pretty up. awful, like, yeah. if we're being yeah, was, honest. Like, the it, bar it was not great. clear to high there. I mean, the bar was not <laughs> – yeah, the bar was not yeah. too high to clear. Got it. There you go. All yeah. right. So, yeah, Mac headed over to Georgetown. And, yeah, we have a Darlin Stone Dubar. God, these names, man. Like, we're all name guy, right? The wing from Hofstra, 6'8", Love it. 210, uh, committed to Tennessee. So, Rick Barnes is out there getting this mid-major talent. I'm sure we remember Dalton Connect. He uh, he worked out pretty well. So, I think that was okay. Had- <laughs> Hoping for some more magic, dude. That average eighteen point seven boards over a steal, shot forty percent from three. I mean, his stash line's pretty crazy, like fifty three percent from the field as well. You look at a shot chart, it's like uh, there aren't any weaknesses. Now, obviously, playing the SEC, you know, probably not going to shoot fifty three percent, but it wouldn't surprise me if he, he sat close into the high forties here. I mean, he could play the two, three, or four position. I mean, he put twenty four and eight against on Duke, and then twenty three and five against St. John's. So I don't want to hear like the already seen it <laughs> um i probably don't have him high enough man number 26 like he was hovering in the high teens for me just so many good players in college basketball making the move here so dubar sitting here at uh at number 26 dubar is going to be one of those guys that goes goes into the portal at 26 and then by the end of it with all the people that enter he's still going to be around the 20 like 25 like yeah I feel like we're gonna it's gonna yeah, be put on some more tape we'll have to move him up <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be hard to bump him down. Like, just knowing what we know about him, you're going to be comparing these players side by side. And it's like, are you, is they are they better than this guy? Like, are It's so tough when you have better? production, upside, like, and then mid-major versus high-major. You know, like, what about the guys that are at the high-majors? You know, what they spin down, the better opportunity. It's so, so, yeah, check out that top 250 board. Soon to grow, though. Soon to grow. Yes. Soon to grow. What are we? What are we doing? No, top no. twelve. Top twelve hundred. Isn't that what you said we were hitting? No, I'm not doing twelve hundred. <laughs> I'll do a quarter of that so far. Maybe get to five hundred this year. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe you heard it. You heard it. This man. This man's putting it out there. Five top five hundred possible on the transfer board. But regardless, get over there tomorrow for the updated big board over at drroto. Dot com as well thanks for hanging out with us we see a bunch of you hanging out on youtube we appreciate you for being here make sure you hit like and subscribe we are on our way to 100 gazillion for fillion subscriptions maybe okay we're, we're at like 921 922 something like that right now and you can help us get to that thousand why don't you just get there tonight or you know 925 is good too but whatever you got to do hit those buttons for us show your love get in the live chat as well, you know, when we see guys coming back after, not just DFS people, but, but guys like Ryan coming back, dropping comments and saying it may be the off season, but we are still grinding, boys. That is correct, sir. We are grinding. We're here doing it a couple times a week, at least for you throughout the off season. So make sure you turn on that notification bell. Hit those buttons so you don't miss anything that we're doing. And it's not just your broskies on screen right now. we got our guy at Fantasy Nav, Eric the Blue, who's pushing buttons tonight. And then at The Real Napier, our guy Napesy Hustle, too. We're all coming to you all off season. so make sure you show up and show out. Live chat is on fire. So let's keep it going.
as we get to the next five, it was the first five, right? Now let's get to the next five. They're not the same. They're not as, you know, these aren't slouches, though. Like, we're not talking like <laughs> no. these are like under 200. No. These are some serious cats here in these next five. And I'm going to start with number 28 on the big board as it is released tomorrow. That's Terrace Reed, formerly of the Michigan Wolverines, now moving to the back to back. Defending AAU national champ. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all know that commercial. Y'all know that old commercial. <laughs> Tom Amansky. Tom Amansky, AAU national championships with the crime dog Fred McGriff. No, UConn back to back, and they're getting the big man here in Reed. And it, it seemed pretty obvious since, you know, uh, he was at the national championship parade. Is that legal? So it, it seemed pretty, who knows? Like tampering. Is there even, does that even a thing? Who, who knows? But it was, it was pretty obvious that he was heading to stores that whole time. Did he gave him a ring or what? <laughs> well, that's, that's funny that you said that because I was actually thinking about like when they present the rings, like when teams win the championship and then you got new guys there the next oh, year. Right? They got to watch all the other guys get it's a the ring. NBA. It's like, dang, like I just got to sit here. I mean, that's okay, I guess. I guess I could win one now. But Reed will not get a ring from last season, but he might help UConn go back to back to back. Indeed, they're going to use him and Samson Johnson in the same type of split we've seen Hurley go with at the five spots over the last few years. This is going to be one where a ton of people look back and say, um, where'd he come from? Not necessarily where'd he come from, but damn, he's that good? Like, Right, like he's I feel like a lot of people like, have been kind of hating on this because Michigan's sleeping a, on Reed, he's being slept a on. Of a train wreck. It was a situational thing because everything up there was just putrid hot dog water. Won't <laughs> be the same. Well, will not be the same. That is not Hurley's program. He does not do that. It is no hot dog water. There is no smell, not even a sniff of it, over there on that campus. He's going to fit in really nicely over there with the Huskies, Mike. Tony Perkins is up next, number 34 on the big board. Hey, that's your boy from DFS right there. Tony Perkins Sorry. finding a new home here, going from Iowa to Missouri, the 6'4 combo guard. Uh, 14 points per game, four and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, almost two steals. Well, I'll say this for Coach Gates. We were you know, all hyped up, you know. We were all hyped up coming from Cleveland State, brought a couple of his guys, made the tournament. In year one and then year two, it, uh, yeah, we had the comment earlier, still searching <laughs> for an SEC win. Oh, and 18, and then you count the, uh, you know, the 19th loss in the old SEC playoff game. But, uh, hey, look, like he did go out and got one of the best combo guards in the country, I believe. I think I'm higher than, on, than most places on Perkins, but we watched him. Like, I love his toughness. Uh, he can get to the rim. He can find the open man. Uh, the question is – outside shooting and Missouri was 277th in three point shooting the shot 32, 32% uh, after they made the tournament the previous year shooting 36%. So uh, yeah, you can kind of, you kind of see that slide there. That's a huge difference. Um, Perkins never really been a shooter, more of a guy that's going to get into the lane, but Missouri kind of going, kind of going a weird way. Like they're going to rely on their wings to shoot the three. Uh, they're also bringing in Marquise work who we also have in our top 150. Yeah. He's a transfer from Northern Kentucky. He only shot 29% from, from three. So these are going to be like your two primary ball handlers. I don't know. That, I don't think you can start them together, even though Gates wants to, uh, you know, run up and down the court. We do know Bates, Tamar Bates, 38% from three. The Kid Cruz, we have at number 72 on our big board from uh, uh, from Tennessee Martin, shoot 41% from three. I really like his game as well. I can do a little bit of read. Maybe you can play him as a stretch four. An SEC that might be kind of tough, kind of like him as a three, but. Like Gates, at least you got some talent in here. Um, you know, some some proof of the Horizon League. Like we talked about how 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 good the Horizon League was uh, this last year. Missouri Valley always one of our favorites. Horizon League last year was one of my favorites. Just yep. a ton of talent in that conference. I mean, we're seeing it. Trey Townsend's in the portal. Uh, Tristan Inaruna was really good. Uh, your boy Golkey, you know, getting the commercials and stuff. My boy, <laughs> a lot of talent <laughs> down there. So. Uh, yeah, man, I think uh, I think it'll be interesting to see. I would imagine Perkins starts probably work as a six man would probably be pretty spicy. Uh, kind of keep that flow, have the wings shoot the threes, and then Selvin Miguel sitting here at forty five, uh, South Florida six four two ten committed to Maryland. I think this is going to be a, a pretty fine marriage between these two because guess what? We talked about three point shooting with the Missouri team. Well, Maryland couldn't shoot the ball from three either. Three hundred forty seventh in the country last year. 
29% from three. Like, that's not Bell good. comes in shooting 39% from three. He was the uh, six man uh, in the AAC last year, six man of the year. So, uh, I think with the news that Julian Reese is coming back, I kind of like this. Like, we talked about Gillespie coming from Belmont. He shot 39%. So, now you put Gillespie at the point. You know, you, you have um, – you have Miguel here, you know, probably going to play a three or maybe come off the bench and provide some shooting. Now you open up the floor for Julian Reese, which is going to just make him even more dangerous than he already is. And then maybe you have a guy on the floor that can create things like Deshaun Harris-Smith that isn't so congested now because all they do, all you do is pack the paint against Maryland last year. Well, he's not really a three-point threat. Obviously, he'll improve in that category, but uh, now he should be able to kind of drive in there. Uh, with shooters available, he should be able to make a few more things happen. So – uh, love the Miguel deal here. Uh, he sits at number 45. And then Aaron Bradshaw, the center from Kentucky. Uh, to me, this one, uh, it, it makes sense, but it also doesn't make sense. I mean, he's a consensus top three player in high school last year. You're going to take him. He commits to Ohio State. Uh, didn't get a lot of playing time. Obviously, he had the there. He had the injury, the Nonienzo there. Big Z was there. Trey Mitchell was kind of playing a lot of the five there. So kind of kind of a messy situation with all that talent with Kentucky. It didn't help that he had the, the injury, though, uh, kind of set him back. We thought he was going to be a, a really, really uh, impactful player for them last year. But uh, this is a good get for uh, no longer interim head coach Jake Diebler. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know if he should get the job, but he got it. I don't know if Bradshaw and Parra can play together, but a timeshare between those guys is pretty scary, Jay. Well, that's what I was going to ask. That was my big thing here is – how often are they going to be on the floor together? Like, I don't know. That's Yeah, that's – I don't know that that's even – these are one of them can shoot. Like, it's – I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of weird. Yeah. Flint <laughs> Towers, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Although, I'm sure they'll run out there and give it a go. I mean, why not when you got that kind of talent? Number 73 on the big board, Dre Davis, formerly of Seton Hall. Now the 6'6", 210-pound forward is going to – the SIP, Ole Miss, out there with the guy we're familiar with here in the Austin area, of course, Chris Beard. And that was that whole recruitment. It, uh, the end, okay, he's there. He got to Ole Miss. All right, he's there. Yeah, doesn't matter how he got there, I guess, but he's there. And, yeah, it's another great get for Chris Beard. It was the reason why when Texas hired Chris Beard as a Longhorn fan, I was so extremely excited because we knew the type of recruiter that Beard was and he continues to be. Um, he's a stockpiling talent. It's what he does. And, and he's doing it a good job of it. Obviously, we talked we talked about them getting top thirty forward Brown Jones. Uh, they add Davis onto this roster, who, who absolutely blossomed last year, and then of course Dia as well. All three of those guys can score and rebound. There's no question that Beard can get talent, and I just I don't know if I want to say that they're being slept on because nobody's really everybody knows how good of a coach and talent evaluator Chris Beard is. But it it does feel like that. Doesn't take him long. Here comes the it coming. She'll be coming Cavalry. around the mountain when she <laughs> comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. That's Chris Beard. Just go on and bring in. How many scholarships does he? He has like a million every year. He has a million scholarships. How is that possible? He's like Vanderbilt <laughs> baseball. They just have more scholarships than everybody else, so they just get everybody. I don't know how it happens. I don't know. But how it happens. you know what's crazy? Oh, like with that, it's like Grady. Grady, she's coming in and asking, "Where do you think Noah Reynolds will go?" Noah Reynolds, like, has been linked to Ole Miss. I'm like, how do you have? They just got the Barnes kid too. Um, so like, I don't know how you have. I mean, I'm looking at the roster. I, I I guess I understand, but I just don't understand how we know Beard from his time here. I feel like someone's leaving. Like you know, Davon Barnes is there. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. He just figures it out, though. Like, this guy knows how to get talent. Yeah, sad to leave, see him leave Green Bay. Yeah, I know Reynolds an awesome scorer, but uh, you look at that Green Bay team, like, he had to do everything for them. Transferring out. Yeah, every bit of it, man. <laughs> like, wow. So, yeah, not sure. Uh, I haven't seen too much, you know, too much news and reporting about where he could potentially end up. Um, I'd like to see him stay, you know, maybe somewhere in the mountain, you know, maybe go somewhere in the mountain west or, you know, just – 
I hate seeing these guys that are so like scoring dependent go, you know, to like an SEC school that it's just like it just doesn't work out. I kind of like to see them maybe stay in the kind of second tier of the high majors, you know, to Mountain West, WCC, somewhere like that where they could really ball out. So we'll see. Good stuff. Thanks for hopping in the comments. As always, it's still on fire. Of course, we, we asked you in our poll whether or not you think Mark Pope will go to the Final Four, will make a Final Four appearance in his first five seasons as the coach of Kentucky. And it's looking like most of you think he will not. But Thomas is hopping in there saying, Do, don't, he corrects himself on the next one, don't be surprised if Marquette wins a national championship within the next five years. Mike, um, Shaka getting them right over there. Um, according to he got to the he got to the Sweet Sixteen, finally in yeah. thirteen years. Yeah. That's a so start. Got that, got that monkey off his back. Um, you know, I don't know, man. Like it's just we've seen. He's really just living off of that run, man. Like <laughs> it feels yeah, like I mean, Final Four. Good guy, good coach. Can get talent. Can get talent. But he's going to be one of those guys that he's just going to be around forever. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And then he's going to end up winning one. He's going to run into one because he's he's a good – he's a really good coach. Um, so we'll see, Thomas. Yeah, thanks for hopping in there and dropping that take in the <laughs> More chat. Wisconsin slander. We can do a whole show with, with uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to all the Badger fans <laughs> morning together, pouring one out for that uh, program. Um but shout out to Thomas for hopping in the live chat nonetheless for sure hit that like and subscribe button as we hit a final five pack here of portal commits who um, maybe they don't steal the headlines Mike but we definitely like what these cats all bring to their new homes yeah Kerry Booth man I like we talked about him a couple of weeks ago when he when he jumped into the portals like oh man we were excited to kind of see Notre Dame you know, get their big three freshmen back and, you know, hops in the portal, 6'10", 205, commits to Illinois. He only played 20 minutes a game, but average six points, four boards. I thought he was one of the better, you know, like stretch forwards uh, in the country. Uh, shows a lot of promise. I mean, he progressed throughout the year. I mean, he's not going to he's not gonna bang you around inside at 6'10", 205, but he's still a solid rebounder uh, with the system that Underwood's kind of been playing. You know, we had the – the Kofi seasons uh, two was that man? God, it wasn't two years ago. That was like three, four years ago. Kofi Coburn just rocking it in the middle, um, you know, playing inside out. And then last year was like, all right, we're just gonna we're just gonna put Gary and, and Hawkins at the four and the five, and we're just gonna shoot a bunch of threes. And we're gonna let Tan Shan and Marcus Damas like just we're not gonna play we're not gonna play with a point guard. We're just gonna have those two create from the wing and handle the ball. And it it wor- damn near worked. Uh, they didn't. Could have played a little bit – where he sacrifices defense, right? Could have been better defensively. But he played that type of system. Boost kind of similar to that, right? Like he's not going to be like this huge defensive presence. Uh, I'd like to see him maybe put on a little more weight this offseason. Progression of his overall game, though, pick and pop type guy, can shoot threes, you know, a good enough rebounder, right? I think he could be a pretty important piece for the uh, for the Illini next year. So, Kerry Boost in here at number 90. Javon Hadley. Number one hundred two, man. I'm already, I'm already sweating this because I. What's going? On? Louisville's cooking up a roster, man. Six six two hundred five from Colorado, average twelve point six six boards, shot forty two percent from three. We thought he was going to go to Iowa State, um, but I don't know. Coach Kelsey's uh, let him cook over there, man. Uh, probably an Good opportunity cook. for for large volume, but at this point they keep racking up these type of guys. So <laughs> it's gonna be a gonna be a pretty stacked roster. I mean, he's virtual on both ends of the floor. He's more than just a three and D guy. And you talking about Rain Smith? He comes over. I mean, he shoots a ton of threes. Chance Edwards, a very versatile player from James Madison. Um, they're gonna be able to. Louisville's gonna be able to shoot. That's what's crazy. Hadley, forty two percent. Rain Smith, an awesome three point shooter. Like Edwards, inside out game. Now you got Ali Khalifa too this afternoon and he's a guy where you put these three guys around him. He, he is basically like a, a point center almost. I mean, he's not going to bring the ball up and things like that, but you run your yeah. offense through him. Uh, this is kind of crazy. So like they have four of our top 125 transfers. I didn't think Kelsey and, and the Scott kid too, there's a lot of upside. The freshman that came over from, uh, uh, from Charleston with, with him. I mean, 
a lot of talent on this team, Jay. Uh, Louisville, it's kind of weird to say, like, there's a, a lot of talent on this team because we got fooled last year with, you know, Trey White and Clark and that whole thing and Huntley Hatfield. There was talent there, but maybe it just wasn't, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe it wasn't the yeah. talent that uh, things broke down there. So would you say that Khalifa is like the anti-Balo in terms of being able to, like, <laughs> yeah. in terms of yeah. being able to be that guy, right? And, and that Yeah, I think he's so perfect for these guys Louisville. around him. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, ideal. Like, ideal. So ideal. Yeah, so ideal. So yeah. love, love, love all these pickups for these guys. Thomas Michaels Louisville lives in the portal, uh, or Lou, whichever one. I was, I'd imagine that's Louisville. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Yeah. When you, I mean, every time a team loses coach, the entire roster is gone. So yeah, I mean, it's the life and times. It is what it is. This is why we're here because we're breaking it all down because we love it. We we're living and breathing this stuff, and we're happy that you're here hanging out with us for sure. Yeah, Grady asking about Greg Gard in the live chat. Man, um, I mean, it's not like talk- he's missing the tournament a bunch of times. No, nah, and we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about a, you know, a big loss in the portal <laughs> uh, here shortly. Um, a recent entrant in the portal that is making it even harder for Gard to, to get it done. Um, but first, Let's make sure we get to Eric Daly here. Should have been a cowboy leaving the Oklahoma State Cowboys and committing to UCLA in 22 minutes last season, put up 9.3 points and almost five boards per showed a lot of promise as a freshman. And UCLA was obviously in need of an influx in talent this offseason. Last year was one of those uh <laughs> Six Flags roller coaster up and down, not the Magic Mountain, like not a lot of fun either. Like not the one that you want to stand in line for. It's the one that they throw you on because you you, you know you don't have anything else to do. That kind of roller coaster, bad. But Coach Cronin's been busy this off season. Obviously, Kobe Johnson, big get, pretty good coming, coming <laughs> from USC, UCLA, little right there happening for Coach Cronin. And then Sky Clark, somebody that I wish I knew how to quit in DFS street sometimes. <laughs> uh, but we know so the young. upside is there, and that's why we still keep going back to him as much as we do. But the Sky Clark upside is there. And now what was formerly a depleted front court now has Daly, who is – I mean, he's a two-way guy. Like he's going to get yeah. it done on both ends. So he's primed for a really nice role, Mike, I think. I'm expecting him to deliver this year for the Bruins for sure. A couple more here on this final five pack. Somebody coming from North Dakota. You love seeing <laughs> North Dakota chat on one and done. What's your, yeah, North Dakota chat, man. BJ Omai, uh, wing from North Dakota, 6'8", 185. Committed to your guy. I won't do it right. But uh, Mark Madsen here. <laughs> Nearly 17 points, four boards. Uh, this one kind of flying under the radar, I feel like, uh, on the streets, you know. But I like him. First team, all summit. He's a slasher. Uh, he's got tremendous length, 58% from the field uh, around the rim. So you like that. He's just going to attack the basket. And he's more of an ISO type player. The ISO, uh, you know, the, the outside game probably going to continue to develop a little bit. So, uh, definitely like uh, what Omot. I can kind of. I'm not going to say he's going to be Jalen Tyson because Tyson's obviously a, showed what he could be and going to be a late first round pick. But uh, I think this is a, a solid one that maybe a lot of people look back and say, "Oh man, like all right, like this this that's actually ended up working out." Uh, we know how well Matson does with these type of guys too. Uh, at number 130 is Jordan Durkak, the wing from Merrimack. I guess uh, Rutgers is the place to be uh, this year. Uh, What's going on? Man, the another one of those fanatics over here, just nil it up, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we got to watch a lot of Dirk Hack here um, in the uh, uh, in the conference tournaments, and then uh, obviously got to the uh, the NCAA tournament. But he's really good defensively. I don't know if he's gonna be able to put up any any of these numbers on this roster and with this type of role that he's gonna get. I mean, you got Dylan Harper coming in as so Ron Harper's son, Ace Bailey. They're both five stars. They're like the number two and number three players in the country, depending on like. Which services you look at? We signed Tyson Acuff, who comes over from Eastern Michigan. One of the I think he's like number three in scoring, and then you have a stretch forward who can shoot the ball from Princeton, which is Zach Martini. So like, 
all of a sudden, Patricio like doing his thing and right, let him cook. I think I don't think it's a top. I don't want to say ten, top fifteen roster, which is I mean, with ceiling of top ten, man, like this is kind of crazy. Especially if this kid's gonna come off the bench and give you sixteen minutes. Like I'm uh, over Where's two Rutgers? steals a game, four assists. Where's Rutgers gonna is Rutgers, Rutgers in the top twenty five to start the season? Where are they? Oh yeah, be? for sure, they're gonna be top like, twenty five. Like, like top, uh, top, top then top they're not gonna put them in the. They should, but probably the high teens. I say high teens, probably seventeen or eighteen. There you go, pick a number. That a boy. All right, seventeen, yeah. eighteen. All right, I'll go twenty one. All right, we'll see. I think, we'll I think see. Rutgers would be. No, Rutgers We're only what? Well, in April. <laughs> oh, you know somebody. They're way too top early, top twenty five. Some jabronis are writing those and getting clicks and stuff like that. How do you write? A top 25 article right now when Arkansas has one player on their roster. Let's not do that. Let's not do that, guys. Either way, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Show your broskies in basketball some love for sure by hitting those buttons and turning on those notification bells. Good stuff there. All those guys recently committing some of them quicker than others <laughs> after hopping into the portal. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Look at Thomas with that comment that you're going to love, Jay. Big 10 looking scary. <laughs> I mean, they are. Thomas. Scary in like a. This is a. And like they have talent, Jay. Scary. Not scary as in like the committee's going to put nine teams in that don't, you know. Just because they only put in six this year doesn't I'm mean just they go back to putting double Purdue, digits in next year. Illinois went, you know, that's put some respect. Well, well hey, it's only because they only put six teams. If they put ten of them in, then <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's good stuff. You're right. I'll give them. I was going to say I'll give them their players, but I'm not. But Thomas did in the live chat, and you should too if you have not. Maybe you don't have to give the Big Ten flowers, but hop in the live chat. Let us know that you're hanging out with us as we move on now to the recent portal entrance. We can't be serious that Jeremy Roach is going to get how much money? Is it like one point five million or something? I... What hey, is man. happening? You know. Allegedly, allegedly, we don't know this. Alleg I mean, it could be. It... But Jeremy, it's a big Roach, number. I mean, it's number it's six a huge number. I asked you the other day if, if Roach was that was that guy that can immediately go in and like be that like just alpha do everything guy for your team and he's a apparently allegedly possibly probably <laughs> about to get paid yeah like one so everyone's on the radar too like it's like all you you're hearing from like every team obviously like look at it like you know, he's done in his career Duke right. Like he's led them to a Final Four and an Elite Eight all four yeah. years in the tournament. He's played with a bunch of NBA guys. Remember the uh, the Final Four year? It was like all five of those guys got drafted in the first round. Ridiculous. It was like Bancaro and AJ Griffin. <laughs> it yeah. was uh, it was pretty ridiculous. So um, I think for Roach though, the reason why I have him so high, it's just weird. Like putting him in the top ten was just weird to me today. But what he does, like he's just efficient. Like he's three to one assist, almost three to one assist turnover. He's like two point five assists to uh, turnover, which is amazing at the college level. He races three point shooting, which was always a knock on him. He's all up to forty three percent on volume last year. He averaged over three assists, so like I think he's just a better real life player than like he's not. He's not a fantasy asset. He's not like a DFS darling, but like for your team, a winner and makes the right plays, like. Yeah, I, I had to have him in the top ten, man. Like he's a he's a cat that uh, that knows about winning. Um, you don't have to have you don't have to watch a ton of basketball to know that Jeremy Roach, right, is an excellent player. Absolutely. Even if he like, even if it might feel a little weird putting him at six, these championship caliber teams are old. They are yeah. older now. It's not the days of five McDonald's All-Americans on one roster winning in college basketball, yep. winning a national title at least. 
those days are i mean it's because everyone can stay old can, now you can barely see it it's like you know it's like an, on a painting when you see like there's like a vanishing point that the artist does and it all <laughs> right there. that is is where you can see um yeah anyways that's how that's how take me into your illusion my friend right yeah <laughs> i kind of i kind of got, got so caught up in it myself i didn't you know i didn't even realize what was going pull, on I had to pull you out man make sure you... Hello. Uh, he's back and and yeah. back uh in in, in a with jeremy roach here and yeah uh, back with jeremy roach here but now moving on to uh, number 15 aid main here uh, this one was surprising. I'm gonna say surprise because does anyone ever leave St. Mary's? It like never happens. Now, obviously, they got a couple of guys leaving this year, but I don't think the system uh, for St. Mary's, which is you know kind of ball control, like great defense. I mean, he's a guy that like wants to shoot threes and run up and down. So I don't think the marriage was was great with that, right? Uh, but big time scoring ability for this kid, and he's gonna have a pick of where he wants to go. I mean, shot 35 percent from three. Uh, in that offense, only 14 points per game. Uh, that's That feels like 20 points per game everywhere else, uh, almost three assists. So, uh, Aiden Mahaney is going to be highly sought after. So, uh, yeah, I got the I got the two uh, two big dogs up at the top. Yeah. Uh, this next guy, I ranked number 53. Number 53. I think you like him a little bit more. So, maybe I a do, debate uh, here. I do like Chucky Hubbard more than you like him, and I think he should end up in the top 50 at minimum after – all of this is said and done, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see how this offseason develops. But I remember what I was going to say, Mike, is that these teams that win national titles have these older players. You can't win with those with all the young guys, right? And Roach is one of those. You have to have guys like Roach on your team. And I think you have to have guys like Chucky Hepburn, too. Like, this is not – some people would say, like, he's just, like, a solid lead guard type of a player. I think he's more than that. Just, I think he brings more than it's like, this is not like Chucky Hepburn. What he brings to the table is much more than like a surface level thing. He runs the team. He knows how to run a team. He plays tough defense. He's a leader. He sets those examples on and off the court. And yeah, the stat, you look at the stats, man. And it's not like it like pops off of the page. Like these aren't Jeremy Roach. I do that in store. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. Like when, when you have to the usage is just getting sucked in by everybody else or by probably one other guy, but other people, it's hard to break up the stats, but still nine points over three boards, right at four dimes, two steals per like, give me a break. Hepburn is going to be an absolute get for somebody. Um, I like his upside more than some. I think that is where, the question might be though, right? Like yeah. if you if you're looking at the overall ceiling, is Hepburn the guy that can take another step forward with an increase? You and maybe he goes to a situation to where he's not asked to do more. Like yeah. Maybe then he just goes and he finds a spot. <laughs> maybe he just gets away from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, like everybody else wants to and probably should. Um, and Thomas in the in the chat saying he's the most underrated defender in the country. If you yeah, if he's not, he's up there. So shout out to Chucky Hepper. And I think he, somebody. I mean, and again, who knows where he'll end up in on the big board? But for me, I am. I might be higher than most around on on Hepburn, but I, I'm really looking forward to to seeing where he lands. That that's one I'll be paying extra attention to. Two more here on the on the slide here, Mike. Before we get out of here. Yeah, I got number 106, Nick Pringle. This guy was so hard to rank. <laughs> um, 6'10", 230. Uh, he's an animal when he's not fouling. Uh, unfortunately, he had a game this year where he fouled out in six minutes. Uh, like, that, just the range of outcomes for this guy, the range of where he could have landed on this big board <laughs> was pretty extreme. Uh, they had some huge games. He really shoots the ball. Maybe if he gets to a spot that, you know, a little more easy. You know, Alabama likes to play a thousand guys. So, you know, he's never going to get more than, you know, I sometimes he saw, you know, high 20s. Uh, really, the fouls kind of kept him and also the rotation when you have a bunch of guys coming in. Uh, but I think he's going to make someone's front court a lot better. We'll see what he ends up doing. And then at uh, number 112 is Kobe Bria, the wing from Dayton, 66205. Uh, yeah, everyone in the chat asking where he's going. Shot 50% from three. That's pretty good. Um, he's also 6'6. So, uh, you know, he can be an effective, like he's not like a lockdown defender, but, you know, 
effective defender uh, when you can shoot the lights out like that. Like usually, like you see these guys like Golki, right? It's like okay, it's gonna be that's kind of hide them on defense. Yeah, Dallas said who's getting Bria. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of stuff like everyone's involved. I mean, the contact you, you hate the list when it comes out. It's like oh, he's been contacted by every single team in the country. It's like okay, that doesn't really help. Fit wise, he feels like someone that's gonna go to UConn. <laughs> Feels like he's gonna go and just be the, no. the, the Cam Spencer at, at UConn. <laughs> oh, what? Oh man! Yeah, I mean, what he's tailor made for what a good for comparison. that. So, oh. I mean, Cam Spencer, you know, obviously can do a little bit more handling the ball, but like this guy, as far as shooting and, and the and offensive role in the system, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff went through Jerome Holmes last year and. Obviously, a little more spread out with Dayton here. So, we'll see. We'll see with Bria here. But uh, maybe 112, man. It's just tough, man. Like, it's hard. That's why we love the sport, right? Like, you're on the headboard more than I am. I think I kind of settled. I think I'm more in, like, maybe the 70s range. You know, you're probably maybe in the 30s or maybe in the 20s range on Hepburn. Yeah. Uh, Roach, like, I'm thinking about it right now. I'm like, I don't even know if I want them in the top 10. We'll see. I'm going to pop on some film. Uh, over the next week, we'll see what kind of all these guys. Are. Obviously, this thing will be we'll put up the final, final draft. Uh, obviously, once we uh, <laughs> we get through all the tape and everything. But uh, this is where they currently rank uh, on that big board that gets updated tomorrow. Loving it, loving it. Getting updated tomorrow over at the universe's most fantastic and awesome website, drroto.com. Make sure you get over to drroto.com and check out all the great stuff over there, including the big board, the big transfer portal board that Mike is putting up. And of course our guy, Nate C hustle has helped Mike out a lot with some stuff with that. We appreciate him. We appreciate our guy at fantasy nav, Eric, the blue pushing buttons tonight. Never too far away. The guy right here next to me in this box, you know him as El Capitan himself. The captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. That's the OG Money Mike, Mr. Mike Holland. I am Jay Heinrich, your sometimes humble host. I am the conductor, that's right, of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. Train right here, ship right there. We figured Eric, what does Eric fly? The blimp? Everything, anything you want. The 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 hang glider swag copter <laughs> like a swag copter. All right, very good. And I think I think Nape C Hustle is on like the Vespa, <laughs> like Holland tail down 935, just That's heading right. down there. You know, we'll let him pick the color. We'll let him pick the color for sure. Shout out to everybody that got in the live chat. Mitt, Dallas, H, Snake's Eyes, Zach Edie's Sushi, Ryan Schnabel. Good to see you in there, Ryan. Peter Jock's Jockstrap. Thomas Michael, super active tonight. Thanks, Thomas. Grady. I'm so sorry for Wisconsin, Grady. Um, I'm sorry, my guy. Can't help it, but I'm sorry. Mo Lester, of course, keeping it crazy as always. We appreciate that. And then, of course, Kobe hopping in the live chat as well. Be sure to hit all those buttons. Check out everything that we're doing. Like, subscribe, notification bells. We're coming to you live again later this week. You know it's going to be busy. It's going to be busy, and you know who's going to be covering it. Your boy's right here on one and done. So make sure you hit those buttons. Now let's get out there in this wonderful world. Tell somebody you love them. Take care of yourself and get this bread. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.